I'm staying inside. It's March 2020. I don't want to be out there, but I do have something to review with you guys. And that's the native script poll that I ran back in February about what backend people are using. We're going to take a look at the percentages and the breakdowns of the most popular backends and see what you answered. All right, folks, welcome back. It's a little crazy out there. Of course, I'm talking about the coronavirus outbreak and we're trying to go about our business as usual. Of course, some of us can't do that. So stay inside, don't go out there. I got supplies for maybe a week or two that I'm gonna have to make a run to the store, but most of the time I'm inside and hopefully you're also staying inside and keeping yourself safe. All right, so in February, I did this poll about the native script backend and a lot of people responded. So thank you so much for that. There's 364 views here, 25 people liked it. And quite a few of you responded in the comments down here. So we're gonna go through some of that. I also got answers via email and I got answers on Twitter. I'll mention some of those technologies. The ones that were linked in the form though, that I sent out via email, those were limited to a set of a few technologies. We're gonna go through that first and then I'll read some of your comments. Oh, and make sure you stay to the end of this video because I'm going to be giving away this native script for Angular mobile development book by Nathan Walker and Nathaniel Anderson. I am going to ask you to retweet this video and include the hashtag, but you got to find the hashtag. It's somewhere hidden in this video. Let's begin. Backends. .NET 19%. I'm a longtime .NET developer and this figure is pretty much what I expected. It's not the majority, it's not even a third of the people, but it's a big chunk. .NET is pretty huge in the enterprise world. It's a Microsoft technology, if you don't know that. And uh, yeah, you can run native script applications with a .NET backend. Of course, the company that developed native script, they're a very strong .NET shop. And some of the things you'll see in native script, like for example, the views themselves, were patterned after a .NET technology called WPF initially. If you come from a .NET background and you've developed either in Silverlight or WPF, you'll feel very much at home using NativeScript. Java. Now here, it's quite a bit less, and I'm a little surprised by this number because I had expected there to be a lot more Java developers out there using NativeScript. Especially since Java is a language that's also used in Android development. So folks that know Java can just go and pick up Android development and use those skills in NativeScript as well. So yeah, we know that NativeScript is JavaScript, which is not the same thing as Java. However, if you do write Java code, you'll feel right at home, especially writing against the native APIs of Android. Node. This is huge. This is the biggest chunk, and I think most of the responses I got in YouTube and Twitter also use Node. And this makes perfect sense because the Node backend is written in JavaScript. Folks that are writing NativeScript apps are also writing in JavaScript. So this makes perfect sense. I'm surprised that this number is not even higher than 37%, but that's a pretty big chunk. It's more than a third. If you're not familiar with Node and you're curious about how to do it with NativeScript, I have a video on this channel that introduces you to getting started very quickly and easily using Node and Express. This video is called Easy Dev Backend for your NativeScript apps. You can find it in my channel here. And I use Node and Express in all the pro courses on nativescripting.com as well. We run a backend along with the NativeScript application because we're developing a real world app as the project in those pro courses that applies to the NativeScript View pro course that's new. There's the NativeScript with Angular pro course and the NativeScript Core pro course. All those courses are available on nativescripting.com and there's links down below. Check out the discount codes. There's also free courses available. We're not using the Node backend in those, but if you want to check out, if you're just getting started with NativeScript, you can check out the free courses there as well. Links down below, folks. All right, what's next? Other. Are you using the other framework? Is that you? I do wonder why there isn't a JavaScript framework or a backend technology called Other yet. Hmm. Other JS. I'm going to check NPM JS right now and see if there's anything called other. 5,434 packages called other. Check it out. There is an other JavaScript library on NPM. Published four years ago. What does it do? Fun times with code. Very descriptive. ES6 has many cool features. Some are potentially useful. What is this? No idea. I think it's just somebody sitting on a name uh, called other in NPM. 
what is that called? Name squatting? Package squatting? Anyway, let's continue. This one. This one is a big one. Huge. Bigger than Java. Bigger than .NET. Smaller than Node. But I did not expect so many people still using PHP. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Nothing against folks that are using PHP. And there's no reason why you shouldn't still be using it. PHP has come a long way, especially with things like Laravel, really like shaping the framework that you should follow. Because back in the day, PHP used to be a mess and folks that developed in PHP really just had code all over the place. It was disgusting to look at. If anybody worked with ASP, the classic ASP before ASP.NET came out, that's what PHP looked like as well. Anybody worked with that, by the way, with ASP? Let me know down in the comments below. That's old school. You've been around for a while if you did that. That was actually my first technology that I started with, with server-side web applications. And it was a pain. Ah, good times. Anyway, PHP is huge. Surprising, but not surprising. And finally, Python. Python is really picking up steam. It's an overall good language for all kinds of things. Scripting, web frameworks, backends. I have very minimal exposure to Python. A company that I used to consult for had a really big, heavy investment in Python and it worked very well for them. Now, I know what some of you might say here. You have languages mixed with frameworks, mixed with other. Well, kind of, yeah because .NET might be a framework, but overall .NET is a CLR. It's a common language runtime. So even though you have a couple of different languages there, it's the same runtime. So that's why I included that one. Node is, while it's not a language, Node uses JavaScript and there's just no way around that. So really these are pretty much languages and these languages cause backend stacks. So they go hand in hand. And that's why I phrased these options the way I did. Again, thanks for your comments, folks. Let's read some of these now. Lars says, I'm using NativeScript for Angular. The backend he's using is Vertex, Java on steroids. I have no idea what Vertex is. I've never heard of it. Anybody else using Vertex? Let me know in the comments. Thanks, Lars. There's so much new stuff out there coming out all the time. It's crazy. I don't know how you can keep up. But I guess if you're on the Java stack, you probably know what Vertex is. Ramazan is using Node. We have a few .NET folks. Malik is using Symfony. So that's a PHP alternative to Laravel, I guess. PHP, Node. Andrew is using Node with Express and MongoDB. Will is using PHP at the moment. Here's a Python user. Python and Django is a popular stack. Ernie is using serverless stacks with Firebase. Interesting. Is anybody using Firebase in production? Whenever I hear about Firebase, it's really cool to get started and to do really small projects. But is anybody using Firebase in a big production application? PHP WordPress as backend. Interesting. I would not recommend that. Duty is using Nest.js. That's another person using Nest. Tyler Blake is using .NET. Hey, Tyler. Good to see you. Tyler is one of the old school native script folks. I got an interview with Tyler on this channel. So he's using .NET for his production applications and for personal projects, he's using Firebase. And that makes sense. I completely understand that. Karim is using PHP with Laravel. Santo Papa Vaticano is using Firebase and Laravel. Robertino Vasilescu is using Node.js and PHP Symphony. Another person using Symphony. Interesting. I got to look into that. Pavel Bogdanov is using mostly Node.js. Finn Gutteridge, PHP Laravel. Danny Pro is using Python. Richard Vink is using Node.js in Firebase. Aslam Abraham is using PHP with Laravel. Raul Gracia Lario is using Ruby on Rails. That's the first Ruby on Rails person here. I did get a couple of people using Ruby on Rails on Twitter. So you're not the only one out there, Raul. Ferdis is using PHP Laravel. Div is using Nest.js. Computerman 2020, I would use Node or Convey. Huh. J Card is using PHP Laravel. Brian Liu is using Nest.js. I've seen many comments by Brian. He's a native script Angular developer and of course uh, an Angular Pro member. Thanks for the comment, Brian. Leo Croft Stewart from Jamaica, I believe. For the most part, I have PHP for my server connectivity, but recently I decided to use Firebase. No turning back now. Hmm, nice. Rajesh is using Node. 
Hannes is using Nest. Nest is really popular. I guess if you're using Angular, then Nest is the way to go. Aza is using .NET Core. By the way, I love .NET Core. It's such a huge improvement over the old .NET framework. I love it. PHP Slim Framework. Never heard of that. PHP Laravel. Everybody knows that one. Thanks, Abdullah. Ernie is using Node.js. Kern is using PHP. Benjamin Grant is using PHP. Thanks, Benjamin. And I recognize your avatar from Twitter as well. Andres is using .NET. Me too. Bogdan is using another vote for Laravel Lumen. Netlob is using Express. Injamuhel is using PHP Slim. Gabriel is using Node. Eugene is using .NET mostly. Elion is using Java. Lassie is using .NET Core. Love it. Oladipopo is using PHP. Fami is using Laravel. Euvoria is using Laravel. So many Laravel people. I gotta say, I've never actually touched Laravel, but I hear really good things about it. Corsaro Nero is using Node.js. It's super easy and super cool. Agreed. Sujan is using .NET Core. Ismail is using .NET OFC. .NET OFC. What is .NET OFC? Maybe OFC is some kind of thing I don't know about. Of course. Oh, I learned a new acronym today. Is that what it's called? Acronym? I'm so not cool. Perpetual is using Firebase or Node.js. Anoop is using Node and Java. And Satish is using Node.js. So as you can see in the comments, we got a ton of people using Node and Nest.js is, I believe it's an Angular related framework built on top of Node and Express. So there you go, folks. A little bit on the long side for this analysis, but if you stayed to the end, you might've caught a little Easter egg I placed in the video. And if you did, I'm gonna send you this book. This is a native script for Angular mobile development book by Nathan Walker and Nathaniel Anderson. This is a really great book for you to use and it has some really pro level tips in here on how to develop native script with Angular applications. I'm giving away this book. All you gotta do is just tweet a link to this video and include that hashtag in your tweet that I've implanted somewhere in this video. I'll choose one person and I'll send that book over to you. All right, folks. It's been fun. Thanks for all your responses and I'll see you next time.